hello everyone a very good day i hope uh, everyone is doing well everyone is safe so in this video we are going to see how the weight matrices are defined for different deep learning ensemble papers uh, which are used for uncertainty estimation so you know the three papers that uh, we will see and we'll you know see how the weight matrix is defined for will be this uh, uh, this deep ensemble paper, the batch ensemble paper, and the rank 1 BNN paper. So we'll see how the weight matrices are defined for each of these papers. And then we'll draw a comparison in terms of the parameter count, how you know this varies when you increase the number of sizes of parameters, and you know how the parameter efficiency is for different paper. And so in this video, like uh, we are not going to cover in depth about uncertainty estimation. This video is not about that or in detail of any of this, uh, you know, ensemble approaches. So we are just going to draw some comparison in terms of the parameter count. So, so on a high level, we'll see how these weight matrices are defined for in each of this paper. Then we are going to code a simple MLP for deep ensemble, for batch ensemble, and from rank one BNN. And based on this uh, MLP code, then we'll compute the parameters for all of these three approaches. And then we'll draw a comparison of the parameter count for all these three approaches. And also we are going to mathematically uh, convince us that the parameters which are coming for each of the defined weight matrices, they actually make sense. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. So let's get started. So first of all, uh, uncertainty estimation, it refers to quantifying the reliability of your prediction. So a result can be uncertain even when it's highly confident. So in order to make sure that the results predicted are reliable, we use the concept of uncertainty estimation. So for example, here you can see there are some predictions, but it has a huge deviations. So it is a high uncertainty and we cannot rely on this. So, you know, we cannot take say real life decisions. So prediction uncertainty refers to variability in the prediction due to plausible alternate input values. So, you know, you can see this uh, with the same input value, there are variations in prediction and that's what is captured by prediction uncertainty. Now, you know, Bayesian neural network, they are quite uh, efficient in capturing this kind of uncertainty. But in practice, Bayesian neural networks are harder to implement and train. And they're also very computationally expensive. So in 2017, uh, L. Balaji, he came up with this paper of simple and scalable predictive uncertainty estimation using deep ensemble, where uh, he showed that, you know, uh, ensembling the deep learning model is a good way of uncertainty estimation, and it can serve as an alternative to the Bayesian neural networks for the uncertainty estimation. So the idea is to take, you know, uh, the mean of all the ensemble member as your, you know, mean value of the prediction and the deviation standard deviation among the predictions from the ensemble members they are capturing the uncertainty this paper was then followed by other paper like the batch ensemble and rank one bnn which then attempts to make this parameter efficient because if you have an ensemble of deep neural networks a single model itself has a huge number of parameters so these two paper attempted to you know minimize the number of parameters of this ensemble members Okay, and uh, so the preface in this, uh, moving ahead. So this paper, the first paper, uh, Simple and Scalable Predictive Uncertainty Estimation, we are going to call Deep Ensemble. The second paper, you know, Batch Ensemble, an alternative approach to Efficient Ensemble, we are going to call it as a Batch Ensemble. And then the third paper, Efficient and Scalable Bayesian Neural Network with Rank 1 Factors, we are going to call Rank 1 BNN. So in the slides for explanation, I have used ensemble size of 2. And in the code, I have used an ensemble size of four. Okay. So with that, let's get started with the first, uh, you know, first paper, how they define the weight matrices called the deep ensemble. So here the idea is uh, very simple. So this is your single, you know, let's assume a single model, deep neural network, which has weight matrices. And when we do deep ensemble, basically uh, we have copies of this weight matrices or uh, copies of the same network but the weight matrices are initialized differently okay so if you just see in this term suppose if you have a deep ensemble of size 2 then you will have you know same model uh, but just that the weight initialization will be different okay so we will we will, we will go through the code and we'll see how uh, this makes sense 
so so if you have say a deep ensemble size of 3 then suppose this 16 you know 16 uh, weight values then if you have an ensemble size of 2 basically you're making a copy of the same model with different weight messages so 16 plus 16 will be 32 if the ensemble size is 3 then 16 into 3 and you know and so so forth so that's why you can see it has a huge number of parameters when the ensemble size increases so we'll we'll look at the code uh, a bit later and I can show you, you know, that the initialization varies when we initialize, you know, different uh, models in the deep ensemble. So this is the deep ensemble, very straightforward, just the weight initialization, that's the one which varies and you have the copy of the same model. Now, uh, coming to the batch ensemble, the next paper, how the weight matrices are defined there. So here it's a very interesting way. So here they have a shared weight. And then for each of the ensemble member, they don't have the full, you know, weight setting. Instead, they define rank one vectors from which, uh, you know, some weight matrices are defined for those ensemble members. So let's see through animation how, how this uh, happens. So first you will have a shared weight W and then say you want to define one ensemble member. Then we will define rank one vectors for that ensemble member. So it's not full weight matrices. It's just rank one vectors. And the rank 1 vectors R and S will be sharing the same dimension as the input and output M and N. So, you know, imagine a, a, a deep a, a MLP and the input of that layer is M and the output of that layer is N. So, they will be as per that. So, we will, we will see this later. But, yeah, for now, for the idea. So, for the ensemble member 1, you will define the rank 1 vectors R i and si this is si transpose and then we'll compute something called so this is called the shared weight and we'll compute something called fast weight from this okay once you have this fast weight and this how this fast weight is computed is basically doing this matrix multiplication between r1 and s1 transpose so you know suppose these are the r1 and s1 vector so you will you know do a matrix multiplication here 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 and you get a size equal to this you know the shared weights so yeah this is how you do then this uh, fast weight computation just by uh, rank one vectors and then once you have this then what you're going to do you're going to take your shared weight which is common and you're going to take the fast weight computed for the ensemble member one and you're going to do element wise multiplication like this gets multiplied with this this gets multiplied with this you know element wise multiplication and then this element wise multiplication then give you the w w1 which is the weight one for the ensemble member one now we'll not go you know how it's defined to make it more training and all efficient but i'm just showing how this weight matrices are defined uh, for this paper so this becomes the weight matrices for the ensemble member one w1 which is computed through you know the shared weight uh, element wise with the fast weight and this fast weight is nothing but computed from the rank one vectors okay now now again for the uh, say uh, ensemble member two you will do the same approach you will have a, another set of you know rank one vector r2 and s2 and then you're going to compute the fast weight w2 and then now you use the same shared weight you know not new weight same shared weight with a new fast weight w2 and then <clears throat> you do the element wise multiplication and you get the you get the weights weight matrices for the ensemble member two okay so now if you see uh, in the previous you know deep ensemble paper uh, you know you suppose for ensemble member two you have to have the same uh, same size of same same size of parameters for each of the members but here the parameters will reduce because you know you're not defining the full weight matrices you're just defining the rank one vector so suppose this is uh, you know uh, a single model was having a parameter of 16 for deep ensemble you know for a size of 3 it will be uh, 48 16 cross 3 48 but for the batch ensemble you have a one shared weight which is 16 and then for all these three ensemble members, you are going to have rank one vectors. So it will be four plus four, eight plus eight plus eight. So it's like uh, 24, <coughs> 30, 40. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So this is 40. You can see for the batch ensemble, uh, for ensemble size three. Now this may not seem very less but as the number of layers and the number of size of parameters increase you'll see a vast difference between them 
okay so this is uh, the batch ensemble definition and then coming to the rank 1 bnn so it is very it is similar to the batch ensemble that we just saw here but now instead of uh, so, so instead of having just point values uh, for the rank 1 vectors they are going to have a distribution so it's actually uh, the idea is drawn from this bayesian neural network so what happened in Bayesian neural network, so say in det normal deterministic network, you will have the weight value as a point estimates. But in Bayesian neural network, each weight value is a distribution. Okay, it's a distribution and that distribution uh, can be defined by a mean and the standard deviation. So here say each parameter has a value one. So here each parameter for each of the parameter, there will be two values, one mean and one standard deviation that defines the distribution of each of the weight. So the same idea is drawn in the rank 1 BNN. So instead of using this full Bayesian neural network, which is computationally very expensive, they use the idea of batch ensemble. But here, this, uh, this full, uh, so this is the, you know, the computed uh, weight distribution for the ensemble member 1. And this is the weight distribution for ensemble member 2. But instead of deriving, uh, defining the full weight distribution they will define a distribution only over the rank 1 vectors okay so so for for instance suppose you wanted to say define distribution for this weight matrices there are 16 so for each of the uh, value there should be two values so there will be like 32 values we need to define to define a weight distribution for here but suppose you just use rank 1 vectors then it's just you have to define the distribution over the rank 1 vector so 4 plus 4 8 so you just need to define uh, sorry 8 into 2 16 because you know for each value so you just need to define 16 values to get this distribution so it makes it more parameter efficient so it's the same way as batch ensemble we'll start with a shared weight you know then we will have rank 1 and uh, rank 1 vectors s1 and r1 but instead of point estimates we will now have distribution so instead of one value for each of this you know weight we'll have two values so s1 instead of being 4 it will be 8 which defines a distribution for each of this and then because this is a distribution then the weight matrices the fast weight that is defined here this also becomes a distribution and then the final weight for the ensemble member that you compute that also is kind of a you know distribution so that's the you know theoretical uh, you know explanation between this uh, deep ensemble uh, yeah if we see this comparison so this is a single model you know for deep ensemble you have same same model replicated uh, depending on the number of ensemble size you're defining here we're defining two just that the initialization values are different in batch ensemble we'll have a shared weight and then for each of the ensemble member we'll have rank one vectors and from this rank one vectors and shared weight we'll compute the weight for that ensemble member like ensemble member one and ensemble member two and in the rank one Bayesian neural network, instead of doing the full Bayesian neural network where we have, you know, uh, distribution defined for the full for the full weight weight parameters, we only define distribution over the rank one vectors, as we define in the batch ensemble. Instead of point estimate, they are going to be a distribution which is defined by two values, mean and standard deviation. So the difference is here we'll have one values per weight. And here we have two values per weight okay and because of this the computed fast weight and the computed you know weights for that ensemble member they also become like a distribution so we get kind of a you know bayesian neural network uh, setting but with a very less number of parameters so that's the idea so i hope you got the idea of how weight matrices are defined now we are going to compute, uh, you know, uh, mathematically and convince ourselves, you know, how this weight matrices will be uh, appearing for all these three settings that we just discussed. Um, so in the in the next video, what we'll do, we'll define uh, MLP, a multi-layer perceptron like this, and we'll sh we'll show we'll we'll compute actually by hand how the parameter counts are for say a simple fully connected network, and then for you know for the batch ensemble how this counts changes for the same you know demo model the mlp that we see and then again we will see you know for uh, rank sorry for rank 1 bnn how this parameters count changes okay so tune in the next video where we'll compute this uh, for a demo model so thank you